Welcome to the next episode of Digital Supply Chain, uh, the SEI Insights in Action. I have a great pleasure today to have with me Vanessa Mbanefo, who is the di director of Open EBL Initiative hosted within DSCI. So Vanessa, welcome. Thank you, Marco. It's great to be here. It's, it's a very interesting uh, area and something which resonates uh, in the same way with paper bill of ladings for last more than 400 years. And I think it's the last bastion within the uh, global digital trading, which is still not resolved. So having that in mind, we know that many organizations, you know, are working into it and uh, they try to do the EBL. But why uh, having in mind also the attempts from large organizations which failed recently, why open source e-bill of lading initiative is different? That's a good question. As you mentioned, there have been a number of previous attempts at industry-wide EBL solutions, and these have been unsuccessful for various reasons. There are three key strategies that we've leveraged at OpenEBL to be successful. And first would be the fact that OpenEBL is warehoused under a nonprofit structure. A nonprofit structure unlocks trust within our community and allows our more commercially driven participants to create value um, on top of the OpenEBL protocol and go to market quickly. Second is the fact that we're open source. We believe that open source strategies create community driven innovation and allow for interoperability across multiple EBL platforms, which is really what the industry needs today. And finally, we are very intentional about being standards-based. We're aligning with the ICC and the DCSA to adopt standards that have been accept accepted across the industry um, to unlock compatibility across multiple vendors and partners and platforms um, to ensure that we can deliver a common data layer across various you know, um, protocols. It's very, then it seems like a very bold move in that sense, which actually is... Uh transparent in a way, and then it op optimizes the costs across the board, but also includes various different stakeholders uh, who have not been part of the same value chain uh, before. So having in mind that, you know, that usually connects things with standards. And we know that there has been various different uh, EBL standards created up to now. Can you explain how uh, open EBL fits into the current efforts and uh, also is OpenEBL potentially proposing a new standard? Yeah, so OpenEBL is not on a mission to deliver yet another industry standard. Our mission is really to deliver a technology platform or solution um, that leverages the existing and well-accepted standards within the industry to drive global trade through the issuance and exchange of EBLs. However, we do see that our technology is quite flexible and scalable to adopt various data standards as they become more accepted within the industry. And we would be happy to get involved in the conversation surrounding interoperability standards because we do see a significant commercial value um, from the interconnectedness of various protocols. It's very good. It seems like here nobody's inventing, let's put it that way, hot water, but actually creating an ecosystem in which the, the, the digital trade can uh, excel, but also uh, uh, the role of freight forwarders can be even more inclusive, especially for uh, small and medium-sized enterprises who have been operating on you know, paper bill of ladings for a long time and not because they don't want to transfer to digital, but it's actually because of the overall cost and capacity transiting towards uh, the digital because it's not only just using it. So how this kind of solution can put freight forwarders onto a proactive approach towards these companies and, or their customers to utilize uh, the, the EBLs and then you know accelerate their businesses. I agree. Freight forwarders are indeed key to the transition from paper-based bills of lading to automated BL processing, especially with regards to the house bill of lading, which is the initial focus for the Open EBL initiative. Our Open EBL members are already developing trade services on the EBL protocol, including trade finance services, payments, customs clearance services, and so much more, which will allow a global you know, ecosystem of trade to be developed within Open EBL. 
and draw in SMBs to leverage those services. And we believe that that ecosystem of trade will allow freight forwarders to gain easy access to SMBs, you know, and gain commercial value from engagement with them. Great, Vanessa. Thank you very much. It actually then creates a one-stop shop across the uh, uh, supply chain. Uh, no matter are you a small or medium, medium size or large business, and it involves all the stakeholders from you know the manufacturers up to a distribution center, and then freight forwarders play the aggregation role in it. So uh, a very very uh, interesting and let's say uh, far-reaching uh, solution. So let us try to round up our conversation. And, you know, we, we usually round up the conversations in uh, our sessions with uh, asking uh, our distinguished uh, guests, uh, what would be, let's say, the one advice you will give uh, to those who are interested in open source uh, EBL as a first step they can do? Thank you so much, Marco. It's been quite interesting. And I would say the first thing to do is to get involved with us today by sending us an email or reaching out to us via our social media platforms. We're happy to engage with you and your, your organization to really understand how you can derive the best benefits from the Open EBL ecosystem. I would also say that we are at a key stage within Open EBL's development where you know, we're really focused on testing and proving the value of our open source approach and how this affects global trade. So we're developing case studies that demonstrate the value of OpenEBL to various key performance indicators within supply chains. So this makes it a perfect time for organizations to get involved with us and get the OpenEBL experience as we work towards advancing global trade. Vanessa, this has been a great conversation. As we would say, the game is on. And I would like you. I would like to thank you for being with us. And I look forward to having a conversation. Let's say in, in next four to six months, just to hear the news of the tests which we can share uh, with all those who are interested. Once again, thank you very much for being with us. And this was another DSCI Insights in Action session. See you next time.